Hello and welcome to join me as we discover the capital of Iceland, Reykjavík. But my name is Gilvi and I will be your guide through not only the actual capital, but what we Icelanders call the Greater Reykjavík area, or the 1% of the total size of our country, where around 64% of the population lives. But to outsiders, Reykjavík seems to be one continuous entity with 230,000 inhabitants, so it might be a surprise that it still consists of six municipalities and eight towns, meaning that this is only first of the eight episodes that I will make for the capital region alone. But in general, we Icelanders and most of our guests call the whole package Reykjavík, and the reason why these units have not merged is a story of Icelandic politics and mentality and, in a way, a journey into the soul of my country. So fasten your seatbelts because you are about to see Iceland like it has never been presented before. As usual, we start the journey on a map and we have the complete metropolitan area in front of us now and we see how it is split up to six municipalities, each with its own elected council. And today we cover a municipality called Seltjarnarnesbær, which is the smallest township by land in Iceland and the smallest municipality of them all with little under 4,700 residents. And from the map it looks like this, and this line defines uh, the borders between Reykjavík and Seltjarnanes. So let's uh, dive down and swap to drone view from this angle. We approach the Seltjarnanes Peninsula with uh, Reykjavík in the background and the Seltjarnanes town in the foreground during this uh, typical winter, or wet and windy. But uh, as we move on, I will promise you better weather since I do have other takes from other seasons. But let's start with the name Seltjarnarnes. It means a seal pond peninsula. And the official town's name is Seltjarnarnes Bær, or seal pond peninsula town. And the pond used to be behind this lighthouse, but sea erosion is a problem, so the pond is gone, just like the seals. So during high tide, it's no longer possible to walk to the lighthouse. And occasionally, the search and rescue teams come to pick up tourists who walked to the lighthouse shortly before high tide and bring them back as free entertainment for the locals. But there is this good and beautiful seaside walking path that can lead us from here all the way downtown, central Reykjavík. So many of the tourists come here either by foot or driving to take a look at this lighthouse that is called Grotta and by most of the tourists considered to be one of the landmarks of Reykjavík. But that's simply not the case. This is Seltjarnarnesbær. And from higher above, during September, the line between Seltjarnarnes and Reykjavík is somewhere around here, and a lot of the land that is Reykjavík now used to belong to this peninsula, landowners around here. And that land stretched all the way to the river, that runs through the city, and this was all farmland. But when Reykjavík became the capital of Iceland in 1786, the city started to buy this land piece by piece, and the final line between those two municipalities was drawn in 1974. So this exists as a separate town for the only reason that the, the local farmers on the peninsula left out the westernmost part for themselves, and later it grew into a residential area that became a township in 1948. And ever since, it's been like just any other town in Iceland, with its own town council, which uh, might sound strange, since Reykjavík could so easily place uh, all their affairs into one little drawer in City Hall and uh, save a lot of money. So why did this uh, municipality, with uh, less than 5,000 inhabitants, and uh, there are many reasons for that. This video will hopefully answer some of them, and the episodes that will come later with other parts of the capital region will answer more. But I'm going to start with a little story that actually doesn't matter today, but it did back then. 
since uh, they used to do things a bit differently around here. And we have been driving now in Seltjarnes approaching Reykjavík. It starts at this street corner where this gate is. And uh, Reykjavík looks of course uh, pretty much the same as uh, Seltjarnes. But like 30 years ago there was this small grocery shop at this street corner. And uh, due to difference in regulations they could stay open during weekends while uh, no other store in the capital region could do so, meaning that people would flock here and uh, line up outside this small store to uh, buy the weekend steak or the stuff that they forgot to buy before the stores closed Friday afternoon. So they did things a bit differently around here back then, but that would of course change. And stores that are open all night can be found all around Iceland now. And the regulations alone are not the reason why this town didn't merge with Reykjavík. So let's look at some rock solid facts. According to polls made in 2020, about 80% of the voters in Reykjavík would have said uh, yes to a merger. But uh, only 35% of the residents in this little town. And a part of the reason can be found in a recent uh, service survey which was conducted in the largest municipalities in Iceland. And this town came out the best in terms of a resident's uh, satisfaction with the services provided by the municipality. But at the other end, it's Reykjavík that got the worst outcome. So this is nothing new about service levels in Reykjavík. And this is quite simple for the residents here. Would they vote for the best service in Iceland? or be a part of a unit that offers the worst service in Iceland, or Reykjavík. But to be fair, it's also more to it. This is mixed with a certain individualism, and the bad politics are of course a large part of the story. And then we have factors like city planning, but Reykjavík builds wherever they can find a free plot, even in old and stable residential areas, often causing a lot of problems like disturbance, so the Reykjavík policy has been all about to densify the city and it turned out to be a disaster since it became so time consuming and we still deal with that in the form of lack of building land planned in time for the market. They are always behind which is a bit odd because Iceland is one of the least densely populated lands in the world. So the lack of building land led to an explosion in real estate prices and ever since, all new neighborhoods are designed for contractors, but not around the needs of the people who will live there. But uh, buy it anyway because it's nothing else on the market. So the 4,700 people that live here, they don't want to be a part of that. And one of the reasons might be that the density of the settlement here on the peninsula is among the lowest in the capital area, mostly due to the fact that they don't build high rises. And the most importantly, they have been sensible when it comes to uh, nature. And a big portion of the land around is a nature conservation area. So like the migratory birds that come here, people from Reykjavík flock in to feed the birds, walk by the seaside and uh, inhale the fresh air. And for me, that have lived uh, half my life in Reykjavík, this is one of the places that I use when I need to uh, charge the batteries. So we are very lucky that... Uh, this part of the peninsula wasn't sacrificed under buildings. So uh, just by our doorsteps we have hundreds of arctic terns that come here to breed. There are always some geese around and uh, numerous other species. A pair of swans did come here every year to breed for a decade. So we could see it in the newspapers when they arrived and uh, how many youngsters they managed to breed. So wherever we live on a metropolitan area, we love this place. And it's also a good place to go and check out the Northern Lights, since it's uh, less light pollution here than within the city. But uh, as for history, I don't have much to work with. But we do find one of Iceland's oldest houses around here, called the Nesestova. It was built in 1761 as the official residence of Iceland's uh, first medical uh, doctor and the first pharmacist and that building is used for exhibitions now but uh, overall about the houses around here it's not surprising that uh, this area is quite expensive especially the seaside houses 
but due to this very uh, limiting uh, building policy, the town has stayed the same for the last decades. But they are, however, doing some changes now, like removing this industrial area and changing it into a residential area, which is a good idea, since uh, this was never the town's pride. And as I turn the camera to the south, we have the Reykjanes Peninsula in front of us, where we have had the two volcanic eruptions during the last year. But you can also see the golf course, or just by the pond, where people usually feed the birds. And uh, it can be fun to go there with a the camera sometimes, especially during the breeding season, or shortly after. That is when the geese hang around the golf course, and the Arctic turn as well. But people and birds get along just fine around here. So this is, in a way, the soul of the town. But uh, what the town lacks, however, might be a town center. Even though they try to call the area around this small shopping mall a center, but it's a bit lame as such. But it doesn't matter, Reykjavik is not far away. But uh, I did hear the other day that they are planning to improve the town center, which is also telling me that uh, a merger with Reykjavik is uh, not on the drawing board. Not now. But uh, to have this as a separate uh, municipality is of course uh, not economical. And with Reykjavik so close by, it's uh, rather stupid in a way. But I think that uh, it's Reykjavik and the service there that is stopping it. But the total population in the capital area is around 237,000, of which 4,700 live here. So in a way, Seltjarnarnesbær is just a Reykjavik suburb. It's a bit of waste of time to differentiate it uh, more than I have done already. It's just the building policy and the town service that uh, left the people here way happier than the people that are in the next street, which uh, might sound strange, but uh, is a fact. There are also several other reasons that uh, I will uncover as this uh, tour goes on through eight episodes in total, and my next episode will be about a town called Mosvelspire in uh, many ways, they have a better reason to stay separate from Reykjavik. So feel free to subscribe to support my channel or use the links in the description box to assist me to show you my home country in a realistic way or to get under the skin of Iceland and Icelanders. And with that, I'm sending you best regards from Reykjavik.